So without any further ado, I'm very pleased to uh, welcome Sue Pearson uh, from Healy City Farm uh, to today's event. Um, Sue, over to you. Thanks, Gareth. Um, it's great to be here. And um, I can't compete with Kitty and Jack and Greta Iceberg. In fact, I had one backup plan, which was my son has baked a loaf of bread this morning, but he's actually just left the house with it because it wasn't for us. It was for a neighbour. So, But in the spirit of this being a festival of debate, um, the farm, Healy City Farm, is celebrating its 40th birthday in 2021 so I've got my happy birthday banner up there so I thought that people would like to see there's a celebration going on there um, fantastic I have got a couple of slides it's very low tech compared to um what you've just been hearing from Duncan so this is this is good old-fashioned growing stuff in the ground using organic techniques so I just wanted to use my little slot um, to talk about community food production and um, the challenges and how we might scale it up uh, here in Sheffield. Um, so I wanted to just credit Gareth there because the farm is a member of the Chef Food Network, the partnership, and um, we're also a member of Sheffield Organic Growers. So the photos there just so show some of our uh, project sites. I think the next slide shows the same thing. There's no te text or anything. It's just pictures of people learning skills and growing stuff. So um, where do I start? Right, um, we, we've got a team of horticultural um, growers. Um, I call them my local food team because that's what they do. They grow food locally. And we've got uh, eight key sites across the city of Sheffield and a few smaller sort of pocket sites as well. Um, what we've tried to do is make it about the people and the skills that they learn when they come to one of our gardens. And we're not the only uh, people in Sheffield doing this sort of thing. We're, we're blessed in Sheffield with a network of green spaces, small areas of land, allotments, pocket parks, where local people come together and there's a social element to it, there's a learning element to it. And importantly, it's a sort of um, pyramid scheme of cascading the skills of being able to grow food yourself at home to feed your family, which given that we've gone through the horrors of Brexit, we're still importing far too much uh, fresh fruit and vegetables as a proportion of what, what we consume. Why can't we grow more for ourselves? So um, we've been doing the local food uh, program for 15 years now. Um, we regularly have between 90 and 102 people every week uh, in different courses across the city. We run training courses in organic growing. Um, we do beekeeping courses as well. And I'm sure that uh, cleverer people than me are gonna be talking about pollination and the importance of uh, uh, urban beekeeping to keep our crops uh, healthy later on in, on this, in this session. Um, the outcomes that we deliver are really about the people um, improving health and well-being with greater knowledge about healthy eating and diet, growing food at home and on allotments, vulnerable and disadvantaged individuals improving their life skills, and an increase in the number of times per week that they cook food from scratch, cook a meal from scratch using uh, raw ingredients. So it's education, training, it's demonstrating organic methods, and um, it has been growing. I can report that we had five tons of produce in 2011 and 12 in 2019. I don't think we've got figures for 2020. And let's face it, last year, 2020 was a bit of a bonkers year for all of us with, with COVID. Um, where does the food go? Um, we provide a fair amount for Gareth's uh, regather box, veggie box veggie box scheme and um, Gareth will know more than me exactly how that works and um, the volunteers themselves take a lot of produce home and there's a huge sense of pride and achievement in actually starting from scratch going through the growing cycle and then actually harvesting something that you've grown yourself and making use of it I think it goes way beyond the nutritional value and the pleasure of that I think it's just it's um it's that feeling you get when you've um, done something for yourself we, in the summer last year, well, with the lockdown, some of our food went to local food banks. It sometimes goes to uh, farmers markets, but we weren't able to have many of those last year. And we have a little community cafe at Healy City Farm and all the greens, all the salads, all the veg, the root veg for the soups and things is grown at the farm. So that's 
Um, I, I, I like to boast and I might be wrong to do so, but I think we've got one of the shortest food mile journeys of any cafe um, in the city anyway. But I, I'd, I'd be happy, very happy to be proved wrong on that because the more people that are doing this sort of thing, the better. Um, we run cooking and eating classes for people um, on low incomes. We call it farm to fork. I don't think we coined that phrase, but you get the picture. Um, go and pick it and then grow it together. Um, I think I might be running out of time. So I think I've been a bit quicker than, than Duncan, but I echo his um, concentration, his emphasis on soil health and soil nutrition. Um, my team are very knowledgeable about organic growing methods and want to share their knowledge and their understanding of the natural environment, companion planting, all the ways that you can get more benefit from, from the land. Um, and in terms of challenges, demand is certainly growing. I, we get many, many more inquiries for people wanting to come along there than we've got capacity for. Um, if I had a vision about you know, how this might work better. It's about join, joining up with other networks, really. And, and I know we're going to hear from some other people on the call who are also um, developing into the world of production, so food production. And I know that we'll also have people talking about the supply side and the distribution side of, of that, um, of the food as well. So I'll not bang on anymore. Um, and I'll hand over back to um, James. Or is it Gareth? It's Gareth. Hi, Sue. Thank you so much. Um, before we welcome our next speaker, uh, we have actually got just uh, a minute or two, so uh, do stay on. The 40th birthday for Healy City Farm, what's in store? Um, well, we've already done a little campaign, a little fundraising campaign, because we are a charity. Um, we, we, we do make some money on the food, but we, we, we're not a commercial farm by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we're hoping to have a Harvest Festival celebration event in the autumn, probably early October, hold the date. Um, where we'll we'll do the it's a little bit like Ambridge you know this is a, a prizes for the best largest spud we'll have Madame Zucchini hopefully to help us do some vegetable entertainment and um, and celebrate both our fortieth and a good harvest I hope. Fantastic. Well, I know everybody here will be uh, you know wishing happy birthday to Healy City Farm because uh, it goes I think you know. It goes without saying, but I think it's worth saying Healy City Farm is a, a food and farming institution uh, in Sheffield. And uh, it's great that you've been able to join us today uh, and share just a little bit of all of the amazing work uh, that goes on at the farm. So thanks ever so much, Sue. Thank you. Thank you.